I'm Byron Hines. In this video presentation, we're going to take a look at the concepts behind the OpenStack Identity Services, also called Keystone. We'll take a look at the concepts here in this video, and there's a companion video where we look at installing and using some of these services in a working OpenStack environment. Keystone is the identity service provider for OpenStack. That means at its simplest level, it keeps track of users and what those users can do. Uh, it is like most OpenStack components has a name, Keystone, as well as an, a, a more descriptive title, the Identity Service. The Identity Service provides identity services, tokens, catalogs, and policy services across your OpenStack environment. So it becomes a one-stop shop for everything to do with authentication and to some degree authorization as well. There's an identity API that's issued with OpenStack. That means that we can manage identity through the GUI, the web interface, through the command line, by coding to the API. And what's interesting about this is the API is generally compatible or a, a mirror of certain other APIs that may be used by other providers. So you can easily transition from other cloud services to OpenStack. As well, it uses uh, or provides the ability to hook into other services that may already exist within your environment. So at its basic level, you can say to somebody who's perhaps not, not a technologist that it keeps track of users and permissions. And that's certainly where it needs to begin. Now, as technologists, we probably delve a little bit deeper into that, but certainly as a beginning point, that's what any identity service is going to do. Now as well, it also provides a catalog of services and API endpoints. So a user can, a user won't sit down and, and do this normally, not even an administrative user, but through the GUIs and tools that you provide to your users, whether that's Horizon or something you've coded particularly for your own environment or for your own customers, it allows the service to present a catalog or to let the user say, what can I access or what can I spin up? And those catalogs and endpoints are stored as well and available, made available as well through the Keystone service. So it really does become that one-stop shop. Now, there are some important concepts you should be aware of, and some of these are industry standard terms, and others are perhaps a little more specific to OpenStack, but you should know what a user is. In this case, it being a representation in the digital system of a person or a system or a security principle or a service, someone or something who is using OpenStack. And they're going to be identifiable, so we can just sum, sum them up as a user. A credential is more theoretically defined as something, data, something representative, that's only known by a user who proves that's who they are. So in order to prove who you are, you have access to a credential. The most common credential is the username and password. Others might be a username and an API key or a token provided by some other authentication service. So let's talk about authentication just as well. And we'll come back to tokens in just a moment. Authentication is the act of identifying or confirming the identity of a user. This is separate from the concept of authorization, which determines what a user is enabled to do or allowed to do. Authentication is the beginning of it. Authentication says we have to know who you are before we can decide what you're allowed or not allowed to do. Other concepts to be aware of are tokens. And tokens are an arbitrary bit of text that in the OpenStack world describes what resources are accessible with this particular token. Tokens are usually encrypted or signed, and they can be part of a larger system. In fact, one of the very interesting things about OpenStack is that it can leverage other systems that are out there, such as an LDAP directory or even Active Directory, which in turn can present its information as LDAP, so that you might be able to reference a user catalog or a user database that you already have. And you can actually use tokens to sign in against some other system. So you can separate the role that OpenStack might provide in providing you with compute resources from the authentication service, which, although being managed on the OpenStack side by Keystone, might be back-ended by some other LDAP directory or utilize some other LDAP directory in the process. This is particularly useful in environments where you have multiple tenants. Tenants in OpenStack terms is the idea of having a uh, it's, it's really more of a container or an area that's used to take all of the resources that belong to one particular client, one particular user, one particular group, one particular department, and keep them all together to either group them or isolate them from each other. Now, this is 
Remember that OpenStack can be used in a many different ways by many different types of organizations. So in a sort of ISP or public cloud provider kind of role, your tenant's likely to be a particular paying customer. In-house in a particular industry, that might represent a department or in a more secure environment, you might want to provision tenants separately to keep them out even within the same company, even within the same department, to keep them out of each other's files or systems for any number of reasons related to security or isolation. So be familiar with the concept of a tenant. And then, of course, the last concept that we're going to talk about today is the idea of a role. And the role can almost be thought of as a personality or a particular persona or task or I don't want to use the word identity again, but it's because it's it's not who you are, but it's what you're allowed to do in this role. So you may have the role of an administrator or the role of a user or the role of a database administrator. During that role, you may have different access access to things by putting on that role. It's not changing your core identity, but it's changing what you can do. So you should be aware of these these terms, and we'll see as we move into the applications how they're actually used to move things through our OpenStack systems and to get things done.